is that you should lay aside every weight. Now, Mark chapter 4, and in verse 1, I want to bring to you a very short word of exhortation before we, we go into prayer. And this word of exhortation is, in, is consistent with the thing that God has in, planned for our lives. And I believe, I, feel, I, I, I sense it very strongly that there are some of us who are uh, at the precipice of coming into something, but you are just at the verge of it. And you need that break, that break so that the deliverance that you so seek will be um, delivered unto you, will be given unto you. And I want to show you something in scripture that at least will be a help um, for you. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. Now, this doctrine is didache or teachings. It's, it's a very interesting thing that we see here. But more important to me is the fact that this is doctrine, the mode of communication was parables. Are you with me? Hi. Every time you see the word doctrine in the plurality in scripture, it's a bad word. If you look at the scripture, you see the word doctrine in its plurality, it's a bad word. It's either it is of devils, because it is Satan that has plurality, that has variety. You know, you know variety? Are you with me? Okay, let me give you an example. The ways of God are not fathomable to the human mind. But when they are, they are predictable. You didn't understand that. I mean that the ways of God are not fathomable. That means that, for example, you do not know, you have no idea of knowing what God is until God reveals it to you. Are you with me? And if God doesn't reveal his ways to you, you cannot fathom it. But when he eventually does reveal his ways to you or to us, those ways are predictable. It means that you can lean on the wisdom that God reveals and you can know that if you go in this path, this is the end result. So when you look at Zechariah chapter 3, when the angel of the Lord was speaking to Joshua the high priest, um, give me Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8. When the angel of the Lord was speaking to Joshua the high priest, and he said to him, if that would walk in my ways, if that would keep my church. Um, okay, verse 9. Verse 9. Mm, I will engrave there for sin the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity from the land one day. Okay, verse 10. In that day, he said, the Lord of hosts, shall he call every man his neighbor under the vine under the fig tree. Next verse, 11. Ah, no. So let's go back to verse 5. Verse 5 of chapter 3. Then I said, verse 5, verse 5, Zechariah 3, verse 5. And I said, let them set the fair mitre upon his head. So they set the fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by, verse 6. 
Okay, yeah, that is it. And the angel of the Lord protested unto, the, unto Joshua, saying, the seven, Thus said the Lord of hosts, if thou would walk in my ways, and if thou would keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts. And I'll give thee places to walk amongst these that stand by. So I, I meant to say that the ways of the Lord are not fathomable to the human mind. When they are, they are predictable. Are you getting what I'm saying? And now, from this verse of scripture, there was a pathway that if Joshua walks in, he will come into something in God. So if, let's say for instance, a lady is trusting God for the fruit of the womb. She's trusting God for the fruit of the womb. She has been married for a while. She's trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Then, she has no idea why she's not able to conceive because she has done every test possible and she's fine. Her husband has done every test possible and they are both fine. So why are we not able to conceive? And so she begins to pray. And then as she prays, the Lord comes to her and says to her, for example, that your mother's younger sister in the village is responsible for this affliction that has come upon you because out of envy for how well her sister's children was doing she decided to afflict you with barrenness but that's not the end of the story because it is only me that can shut the door and no man can open it so what you will need to do then is that for the next let's say 31 nights I'm going to stand up and pray, and in so doing, you and your husband they will cancel out the activities of darkness that are currently holding sway in your life, and the curse will be reversed. See, that pathway, until it was revealed to you, you will not have known it. But when it is revealed to you, the end is predictable. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's predictable. So in Deuteronomy, I think chapter 28, Moses was telling the children of Israel, if you do this, this is what will happen. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. But if you do not, this is what will happen. Is that any mentioning sicknesses like the consumption? The consumption. It will come upon you. All kinds of things. Your land will be barren. All kinds of things. I I'm saying this to say that the ways of God are not fathomable to the human mind. But when they are, they are predictable. Are you with me? It's only Satan that has variety like that. That he surprises you in the morning, he surprises you in the afternoon. It will just be all kinds of things to make things, to, to give it a semblance of life. But it was um, Boham that said that the son that we are using today the same son that Abraham used. Are you with me? We can rely on the workings of God to that extent. We know when it's time for it to set and we know when it is time for it to rise and it does not fail. And that is why you see in scripture the word doctrine. When it comes to rain, it relates with the things that God is doing with us. You see, let me tell you something. When people say things like have you heard something like that, that this thing that Paul said, or that Peter did, he did it when they were still young in the faith. They had not yet matured. But as they matured, they knew better and said better. It gives a sort of notion that there are doctrines. There is variety in the doctrines of Christ. But that's not true. The reason is because although doctrine will be progressive, it will not be contradictory. Are you with me? In fact, in John chapter 16, when Jesus was talking about the comforter that will come, he says, I have many things to say unto you. You cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, that is the spirit of truth, comes, so when the spirit of truth comes, the one that is the spirit of truth will guide you 
in all in all things i would have thought that if jesus is saying that i have many things to say unto you that you cannot bear now the spirit of the, the spirit of truth will come and he will say those things but he said that he will guide you in all truth he will not speak of himself but then he will remind you of the things that i have said unto you that's really interesting to me particularly because Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit will remind you of the words of Jesus. Are you with me? Stay with me. So if the Holy Spirit is going to remind us of the words of Jesus, the implication is that the doctrine is one. In John chapter 7, Jesus said that even this doctrine is not my own. See, my doctrine is not mine, but him that did what sent me. So it means that if the father comes and teaches you in a hypothetical world, when the father comes and teaches you, when the son comes, what he will teach you will not be different from what the father has said. When the Holy Spirit comes, what he will teach you is not going to be different from what the Father has said. It's part of the reasons why the things that God revealed in the Old Testament, Jesus did not cancel them out. He said, I have not come to cancel out the law. Don't think I've come to abolish it. That's not what I've come to do. For God who in time past and in diverse manners speak unto the fathers by the prophet. It was God that spoke to the fathers by the prophet. But in these last days, he speaks to us through his what? So, so the doctrine that Jesus is communicating is not his own, he says. It is the doctrine of him that sent me. So whatever it is that the Father taught you. Whatever it is that the Father taught you. Um, it, was it Moses that said, listen to me, oh, you're, that's in Deuteronomy chapter 32. 32 or 33 now? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. Deuteronomy 33, verse 1. Okay, 32 then. It's 32. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender hip and as the showers upon what upon the grass my doctrine so what you see the father teaching what you see the father communicating the things that the father gives us in the law and the prophets and it is very interesting to me that paul tells timothy that from from a child you have been taught the holy scriptures and the holy scriptures are able to do what to do what to make you wise unto what salvation it's the father right from when the holy scriptures were being given the goal was to make men wise unto salvation so it means that if the holy scripture were, was the only thing that a man had access to he is he has enough for salvation when lazarus and the rich man went on to the other side the rich man said unto father abraham i have five brothers send lazarus let him go and help my brothers so that they will not come to this place that i have found myself abraham said unto them unto him your brothers have Moses and what? The prophets. Let them hear them. You know why that is interesting? You know why that is interesting? That rich man was saying that I don't want my brothers to come here. I want my brothers to be where you are. So send Lazarus. Abraham said they have Moses and the prophets. So meaning that Moses and the prophets that they had was sufficient for them to escape the fires of Hades. Abraham did not have Moses and the prophets. Abraham did not. Yet God found a way to extend grace unto Abraham such that 
even though Abraham did not have Moses and the prophets, Abraham still found his way into that place that the rich man whose brothers had Moses and the prophets found um, 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 found himself. However, the fact that his brothers had Moses and the prophets meant that they had a greater advantage than Abraham had himself. So Abraham was saying to him, your brothers have stand a better chance than I ever did. And I am here. If I can be here, your brothers will say, you see, you see, walk over for them. So if they cannot listen to Moses and the prophets, I assure you, even if somebody comes from the dead, they will not listen to him. Guess what? Somebody came from the dead. His name is Jesus. Did they listen to him? So, so, the doctrine is one. What God said in the Old Testament is what he said in Jesus. It's what he's still saying in the New Testament through the Holy Spirit. You cannot therefore say and be normal. You can't say it and be normal that the apostles somehow were not knowledgeable as at Acts chapter 2 or Acts chapter 5. It didn't really have sense. It was still efficient. And it started coming stronger. There is no variety in the doctrine of God. His doctrine is one. Are you guys what I'm saying? So I'm saying that it may not be fathomable to the mind until revelation. Prior to revelation, it may not be fathomable. But post revelation, it is predictable. So you can know the end, right? Once revelation is given. So he said to Joshua, if you will walk in my ways, if you will keep my charge, then it means that prior to you walking in my ways and keeping my charge, what will happen? You will not. In the day that you eat of this tree, in dying, what will happen to you? You will die. So, and that word in the Hebrew is very interesting. It says, in dying, you will die. It doesn't mean that you just fall down and die. It means that you will die and you will know you are dying. You know how they will set somebody to burn at the stake? Or somebody that drinks sniper. The person knows that his life is edging away. And there's nothing he can do about it. You know how you will die in dying? You people know it, you know it. How if somebody is young and the person begins to grow, his hairline begins to run away, begins to run backward. His eyesight begins to get dim. Are you with me? The things that he used to do as a young person can no longer do it again. That is one of the greatest impacts of the fall. And if God can deliver you from that's what Paul talks about, the bondage of what? Corruption. Hi. It is what Romans chapter 8 was talking about when he talks about the redemption of the purchased possession. That because we, as we are like this, we have been sanctified, we are being sanctified, and we will be sanctified. We have been saved. We are being saved, and we will be saved. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. We will be saved. We will be saved. And it is because we will be saved that we have hope in this. It is because we will be saved. There is so much I want to communicate within the short time that I have. I need to make this very clear to you, my friends. But see, when God reveals a thing, that pathway he reveals can be predicted. The wisdom that is domiciled in the mind of God is is wide, is deep. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, Oh, the depths of the wisdom of God. And that it is beyond searching. It's beyond searching. But if he gives you the opportunity to peep into the pathway of his counsel, I can assure you that you can bank on it. If that will work in my ways, if that will keep my charge, then you shall judge my house. So I was saying that, they said, in the day that you eat of this, in dying you will die. Prior to that revelation, 
he wouldn't have known that the sure path to death was to partake of that tree. He wouldn't have known. But then he knew. It was revealed to him. He would have thought that he would avoid that thing. If I were Adam, I would be in a fence there with barbed wires. So that just in case I avoid it, my children will not. But guess where they went to sit down and collect fresh air? <laughs> of all the trees that were in the garden, they just sat down there and they were just enjoying themselves. Because Satan did not need to provide transport for them to taste the food. You didn't hear them say, like the way they took Jesus to the top of the mountain and told him, they didn't take them like that. They were right there. They were, ah, ah. They have told you that this is what to avoid. How is it that that's where you are playing? They want to take selfie, you go there. Say, chilling with the most high. It is under the tree. You can bank on his revelations once they are given. For in Mark chapter 4, Scripture tells us that Jesus was saying many things to, to them in parables. He was saying many things to them in parables, or he was teaching them many things by parables, and he said to them in his doctrine, in his teaching. So the doctrine was his teaching, but his mode. You have taught before, you have been a teacher somewhere. You have been with me, whether NYC. You know teaching aids? You know teaching aids? So the teaching aids of Jesus were parables. And parables were the way by which he taught them what? Many things. Parables were the way by which he taught them many things. He taught them many things by parables. Don't forget that. Now what he was teaching them was what? What was teaching them was what? Many things. Now the way that the kind of teacher that God is, is an object teacher. Right from the Old Testament, you see that expression. That he will take the prophet to a valley of dry bones. And it's his, it's his intention is to give him a prophetic word. You know, Peter said, and the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men, they speak as they were carried by the Holy Ghost. That word is both literal and figurative. Because you see that Ezekiel was carried to the... He said, the spirit of the Lord was upon me. And he carried me. You know, I've always asked the question, if the Lord is on, on you, how is it that where he's taking you to his dry bones? Is it not amazing? If they were to give you a form now to fill possible destinations that the spirit of the Lord should take you to, you will be having options like Canada, Kuwait, Australia, isn't it? The value of dry bones in Sambisa will not be an option. It's like what I was saying yesterday, that he takes you to places you do not want to go. Mm, it is the way he drives, he drives, he drives, he drives. After that, Jesus was baptized in the rivers of Jordan, the testimony of the Holy Spirit or the Father that day that physical ears could hear was what? This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You are you with me? A voice speak. And the Bible says that immediately in Mark chapter 1, the spirit driveth him. It was not the voice that drive that drove him. It was the spirit. That spirit was the spirit that ascended on him like a dove and drove him not to a resort, not to the beach, to go and chill. If God is pleased with you, at least he should make you fat first. Drove him to the wilderness. You'll be tempted of the devil. So for 40 days of this his encounter, he didn't see angels, he didn't see it was high. And this was supposed to be because God was pleased with him. Be careful what you ask for. It was because God was pleased with him. 
You see, there are some of you that your life, the way it is going, does not seem to make sense. Particularly because people that are not as involved in God the way you are, they seem to be having life easily. It's time for a jam. The person wrote jam, got in, entered into school. Came out after youth service. Went for youth service immediately. Came back, a job was waiting for them. While they were hustling that one, they got married. They got their first child in the ninth month of their wedding anniversary. I mean, everything was going on easy. After you finished university, they didn't see your results again. You, you needed to now call countless, <laughs> countless prayer meetings. And you're like, what is this about? You kept praying, praying, you had to break yokes, all kinds of things. And you are like, what is wrong with me? Meanwhile, by the time you come inside the house, you want to worship small, God will just show up. Presence choke. Everywhere is, is saturated with God. And you are like, Kai, this is the life. But you know that if you leave this place, you are coming back to Nigeria. And in Nigeria, your result is missing. NYSC have not yet mobilized you. You finish that whole duel of your life, then you need to start another round. You need to wait for three years, four years, before you even get a job that can pay house rent. What kind of problem is this? Meanwhile, every time God talks to you, He assures you that you are in His love. Is this what you do to people you love? I'm telling you, you are not alone. When the hand of the Lord came on Ezekiel, He took him to the Valley of Dry Bones. And the intention for that journey was because of the strength of the call that was on the man of God's life. Are you with me? There are certain kinds of presence that God will take his man through because of the intensity of the call, of his plan for that man. The other guy that seems to have everything going easily has no, he has no serious thing going on with God. I hope you know that in Acts chapter 12, when Herod stretched forth his hand to verse 13 of the church, everybody was not captured in that vexing. Are you with me? The deacons were not captured there. You remember the deacons? We were not in the picture at all. So a man like, maybe say Philip, who was like strong man, like all kinds, he was not part of the setting. He was not the face of the Jerusalem church in that day. So, the guy could even go out normally and come in. Nothing happened. That guy would not need any kind of prayer meeting to be held on his life. But the other guy on whom they are said this is the rock that yeah, you are, um, um, what do you call it? Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. And upon this rock I will build my church. That's the one that they will go and keep in the cell. Have you slept in police cell before? Spend the night. Part of the things, part of the things that you will fellowship with is... Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> See, there are in the realm of the spirit. Mm? Mosquitoes have their realm. There is a realm. There are mosquitoes that don't bite. <laughs> but they sing. There are others that bite but don't sing. <laughs> I God give you understanding. So are you with me? Uh, so in that place now, that was where Peter was sent to. And the man slept. They had to be praying for him. They had to be sending prayer points his way. Every other person that probably was doing things in small, small villages was not the focus. I'm saying that those people that seem to be having their life easily, even though it doesn't seem as if they are touching God in any way, and you that you are investing your life with God, don't think that if you stop, your life will now become easy. No, you have, see, this thing, eh, before you were born, they selected you. That this is the path that you will walk. Are you with me? So if you say that, okay, if I stop now and become like that sister, you will just die. That is, <laughs> that, that one is like, you are handing over yourself to them and say, you have been trying to catch me and I've been making it difficult. Now, see me here, see me here, see me here. It should be the case that the burden of the call of God upon your life should determine your consecration. If you know how much investment that God is demanding of your life, that is what should provoke you to keep yourself in check. 
there are some of us that cannot as much as steal a kiss. You know how some, there are certain people that they can go and enter into a relationship and be doing what they like, and then they will come and say, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and God will forgive them. There are others that can't try it. They can't. They can't try it. Because their case will be like Esau. That even when they will seek forgiveness genuinely with tears, they won't find it. Because you had only one opportunity to sell your bed right, and you took it. You sold the bed right. When you realize what you have lost, why? God forbid you. That is why, personally, it is part of my intentions. I do not want to find out what I have when I lose it. So there are certain roads that I will not tread. I will not trade. So holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Bible now tells us that Jesus was teaching them. He taught them many things and those many things were taught to them by parables. And I was saying that Parables are a teaching aid with which God uses to communicate mysteries. Okay, so when in Ezekiel 37, this, the hand of the Lord took Ezekiel to the valley of, the dry, of dry bones, it was by parables that that prophecy was supposed to be communicated to him because Ezekiel had no idea what he was doing there. Even when God was asking him questions, his response was, it is you that knows this one. It's you that knows this one. So when he saw that in this valley of dry bones, have you gone to a slaughterhouse, a butcher before? What do they call those things? Abattoir, right? And you see, you have an idea of what it means for bones to be scattered. You see one femur somewhere. You see one, one skull somewhere. You just see one backbone somewhere else. God said to him to prophesy. And while he prophesied, all of those things began to find their parts. Began to find their parts. So you could, have, you could be sure that when you saw somebody in that army standing, the head on his trunk was his head. It was not somebody's head that came to join with his trunk. God found a way to join them together and then he put the wind in them. And so he told the prophet to prophesy and said, right now you are looking at yourself as a company of people that are dry, and looking at yourself as a company of people that are dejected, but I will scatter you from all the places that you have been scattered, and I will put my spirit in you. The prophet had to be taken to the valley of dry bones so that when he saw what God did with these dry bones in the valley, he could accurately communicate to the people of God that this thing that you are thinking is your situation now is not beyond the hand of God. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? And I hope you know that it is nothing with God to raise the dead. It doesn't matter how long a person has died. It doesn't matter. God can be creative with death. It does not matter. Okay, part of the things that God wants to do at the resurrection is that those that are asleep in the Lord will rise again. You know what it means to die for four days? Before this. To die. That means the composition has started setting in. Are you with me? The composition has started setting in. Jesus was able to bring back a person that was four days dead. It was so bad. Listen to me. It was so bad that when Jesus said unto his brethren, Take me to where you have made him, their response to him was that it's been four days. He go down the smell by now. I thought you people were crying just now. They will not see evil. But listen to me. There are people that, because of the environment where I practice, there are people that are alive and they stink because of the ailment that is on them. They are alive and they stink. Are you getting me? You don't know it. And may you not. Because there are certain kinds of patients that if you enter the world where they are, you can know that this kind of patient is in this place. The person is alive. But he stinks. In that kind of situation, you still see his family members around him, hoping for the best. 
hoping for the best. The rest of us that have to take care of them want to spend as little time with them as possible because you want to breathe. You have not seen something. I said, because you want to breathe, sometimes the face mask will not help it. In fact, there are certain patients like that, there are certain situations like that, like Fonia's gangrene. Let me even use that one, for example. If that patient comes to where you are, hours after the patient has left, he leaves his presence there. And if somebody comes to that place, they will know that the spirit was here. Yet, you see, see his family members around him trying to tend to his wounds, trying to, you know, all kinds of things. Mary and Martha said to Jesus, he go down this map. I thought people were crying just now that your brother was dead. How is it that it is, there are people that, will, if it is just that smell, as long as he's alive, let him live. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Well, these people that were just crying now said, that make we not open our mouth, he go down this map. That was what Jesus brought back to life, that thing. That was what Jesus brought back to life. So that when the prophet in Ezekiel saw the thing that God was showing him by a parable, and then God now related it to the nation of Israel as to what they were. By the time the prophet would stand to prophesy that thing, the confidence with which he would be speaking, the church members may not understand it. They may not understand it. They say, ah, what? Have you seen? So, some years ago, I saw a video of one of our fathers in the faith in this country. He was describing what, okay, so according to him, God had told him that he was going to build a 50 seater auditorium, like a 50 seater auditorium. Now, at the time when he gave that prophecy, this our church was more than that, his church. So it was a comedy. You know that, that kind of a thing. <laughs> But I saw, I saw the video. The confidence with which he spoke. Are you with me? He said that afterwards, one woman called him and said, out of concern, she was genuinely concerned. Said, Stop talking like this. <laughs> Stop talking like this. People will not take you serious again. That was how Ezekiel would be looking. I don't want to do this because if I enter the Ezekiel 37, I won't go to where I'm going to. So it is calling me, it is calling me, but I don't want to answer. The people of Israel had said that our case is bad. We are like dry bones. So God took Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones such that when God was asking Ezekiel questions, Ezekiel said, it is only you that has the answer. It's only you that know. God used Ezekiel to do to those, to those dry bones what Ezekiel did not know was possible. And then God now gave him his word. I said, go and say to the people of Israel. When Ezekiel will come to that service that day, I said, Kai, God has said something. The confidence with which he will be speaking. Eh? The people he's speaking to will not understand it. What's wrong? This guy does he know our situation. Is it because? Is it because? The man has seen something. He has seen God do something he did not think was possible. Are you getting what I'm saying? I am saying that God also communicates by parables. Because until that vision was over, Ezekiel had no idea where God was going to. It also means that parables also needs to be interpreted before you can lean into the wisdom that they intend to communicate. So Mark 4 tell us, tells us that Jesus taught them many things. So that if you only had access to the parables that he was saying, you would miss out on the many things that he intended to communicate. So parables are teaching age. And in verse 11, verse 11, I don't have the time, so I need to jump. Verse 11, Mark 4, verse 11. Right, verse 10, he says, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. And he said unto them, 
He said unto them, Unto you it is what? Given to know the mystery of the kingdom. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them so when jesus saw the multitude he began to teach them many things in parables but those parables were mystical there was supposed to be a code by which the interpretations, because the, the, the truth is, it's only the man that says the parable. I can give you the meaning of it. Are you with me? In Second Samuel chapter eleven, when Nathan, when Nathan came to David, I was saying, ah, a certain man had so on, so on. So. Then a poor man had a little small lamb that he loved with all his life. He even drank from his cup and all of that. And then a traveler now showed up. A traveler. <laughs> okay. And then when he finished that parable, David had no idea what the prophet was doing because he actually thought he was coming to report a matter to him. He now cursed himself. He said, that man will surely die. And he will be made to repay four times what the other person has lost. The prophet played him into his trap and said, You are that man. So until a parable is interpreted to you, no matter how intelligent you are, you have no idea what it means. Because you can quick take any meaning. Now Jesus said, the reason why I'm teaching in parables, it is because on to you it is given and I need to make this point very very clearly because this is the first thing Jesus says the first thing Jesus says is that unto you it is given what is given to know the what the mystery of the kingdom okay and to them that are without it is not to them that are without all these things are done in parables. Who are they you? And who are them that are without? While I prayed, it became clear to me that there are some amongst us who are operating life at the level of mysteries it is not a plan of god that life is perpetually mysterious to you or the things that god intends to be doing with your life is perpetually mysterious to you it is not the plan of god it is not the plan of god the people that should that should look at mysteries and communicate with them at the level of mysteries are them that are what without them that are without them that are without all these things are done in parables so the consolation for me is that it is given unto me in deuteronomy 29 29 there is something that scripture clearly says it says the secret things they belong unto the lord the secret things they belong unto the lord and the things that are revealed are for us. So it means that pertaining, because again I have said, it is impossible to know the mind of God until God reveals his mind. If a spirit, if some, or if somebody does something to you by the aid of a spirit, I can assure you, a hospital will not help you out. Are you with me? There are certain people that the poverty that is upon them is spiritually engineered. It's not 
It's not because they don't know how to manage things. Hi. There is something that scripture calls wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. The people that wield that level of authority most times are not sophisticated. They are not. Are you with me? There was a young man that I knew very well. Or I knew very well because he's no longer with us. I knew him very well. He was doing pretty well for himself. Finished his HND, went for youth service, came back, was working with Promasido, and those guys that make cow and as well. So he was doing very well. At the time, within his first year of working with them, he bought Benz. Benz. You with me? Bought Benz. First year. He got married. Within his first year of marriage, he had twins. So his life was going on pretty well. His twins were not up to one year old when he went to the village to see his kinsmen. You understand? This thing I'm telling you, it's something that happened in my very before. I was like, I was a teenager at the time. So he went to see his kinsmen. That is his village. In the state where I come from, I don't know this place very well, but when people want to do IT in witchcraft, it's there that they used to go to, to learn wickedness. And, and I'm, when I'm talking about wickedness, I'm talking of creative wickedness. Wickedness that you don't know exists. You know the Cross River? I'm from Cross River State. So that Cross River is a river. It's, that's a river. That village is before that river. You get, you get what I'm saying? It's, it's strategically efficient. Mm. There was a time that some boys from my school went to do cultism initiation. They went to do initiation into cultism. <laughs> I don't know whether they were joking or they were serious, but the place they chose to do their initiation was that river in that village. That was where they chose. I don't know whether they were joking, but the idea was that they would go and get initiated there. So they went there, and then someone tipped the police off. So the police invaded the place. All of them ran into the river to escape. And that was their escape. None of them came out alive. All those guys that, these were school children that went, I don't know whether, whether it was play in a plane. Let us test autism. People used to test autism in the bush, in the, in the town. They traveled to that village to go and be initiated. So that's the place that this man comes from. So he went to go and see his kinsmen. He had done everything successfully. And then, I still remember that Saturday. Um, then I was still a football fan, so you know, the club I was supporting, I won't mention the name, I was playing that Saturday. That guy was a fan of that football club, so his intention was that he was going to hurriedly come and watch the match. His uncle was the one that bade him farewell and closed the door of his car. That was the last night. That closing of the door, the next time they opened that door was to bring out his dead body. There's something called spiritual wickedness in high place. So he left twins that he just gave birth to, and a young woman as a wife became a widow instantly. It was like a dream to her. She kept saying, God forbid, God forbid. In the, in the midst of all of that, she kept saying, God forbid, God forbid. It was like a dream to her. Listen to me. It could be the case that there are certain things like that that are spiritually engineered. If something is spiritually engineered like that, you cannot use physical ways eh, to find them out. But scripture said, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. So there is a way by which wickedness is undone. Are you with me? There is a way which, by which wickedness is undone. It is undone. So that it is not the plan of God that children of light are kept under the shackles or the chokehold of the works of darkness. The way by which wickedness is undone, it is not given to them that are without to know it. Unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. But to all them that are without, these things are done in parables. I want us to pray this evening. And the prayer I want us to pray is pertaining to this matter.
this matter. So in Romans chapter 16, in Romans chapter 16, I'm going to read for lack of time. Please pardon me. I'm going to read verse 25. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to what? The revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. 26. 26. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the what? Obedience of faith. This will take some time to unpack but the point here is that the Paul is saying that according to the gospel there are certain things that is the mystery it's it's a mystery this mystery has been kept secret since the world began but thanks be to god that due to the benevolence of jesus christ through due to the benevolence of the finished works of the cross this mystery has now been revealed and it is made manifest the scripture happens to be the platform by which these secrets or this mystery is made manifest and the people that have access to this ministry are them that obey the faith are you with me there is a certain level of knowledge that a people will never come into until they come inside unto you it is given to know the mystery but to them that are without they remain in darkness part of the reasons why you will find out that there seems to be a pattern of life in a family and then one person that now became a child of god came out of it and is living his life normally and then the other people that are still um, in the world hi I was preaching somewhere one time and then the Lord spoke to me while I was there that there is a there is a family there that the men in that family are in their 50s they are in their like they are advanced people and they're not married and in that family they are advanced and not married but they should come the Lord needs to bring me the past so somebody came out and later on the person said they would like to see me the, the woman that came to see me was obviously an advanced woman. And at the time, I think she said she had four children or so, but I'm, I'm, I'm not forgotten. She told me, she asked elder brothers, these are elder brothers, about three of them or so, thread, calling their ages to be very frightening ages. They are still living with their mother. She, that is like the youngest of them, who found the Lord had come out of that thing and she had had her children and had gone but her elder brothers i'm talking of frightening ages like that kind of nigeria age you know how they're still living with their mother their mother was still cooking for them like the way you would do with your children you see the mystery by which people break out of demonic strongholds and chokeholds that mystery is not available to them that are without. That is why you will find out that even though patterns seem to still be existing, one person just walks out of it and it's just normal. I get what I'm saying. It's just so I told her, see, the first thing that we need to do for these your brothers is to first bring them inside the house. These people need to be born again. It's not. Because whatever is making them become this thing, He's taking advantage of the fact that darkness abides in them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. At least if somebody is doing the world, there are people that do the world, do the world, they have children out of wedlock. Is it not? 
These people, nothing will show for everything that they are doing in the world. They are still children of their mothers. If, you are, if a person is already 60, his mother cannot be 65. And so for a mother of a 60-year-old to be cooking for him, ah, no, that's, that's an abomination. A, a, a spirit is involved in that. But the deliverance that comes from heaven is, is by the communication of a mystery. And scripture says that this, minis, this mystery is now made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all the nations for what? The obedience of the faith. Third scripture. In Ephesians chapter 3. Ayla, seven, Ahabuna, Kades. In Ephesians chapter 3, again for one more time, I just want to go to what is interesting to me. In Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verse 7. Whereas I was made a minister according to the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me. Who am less than the least of all the saints? Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might be made known by the what? By the what? Church. This mystery has been hid. Where? Where has it been hid? Where has it been hid? In God. Verse 9. The mystery has been hid in God. But now the mystery is made known by what? The church. The formula is the same. Unto you it is given. But to them that are without, it is not. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. 25. Colossians 1, 25. We want to pray now. Whereof I... I made what? A minister. According to what? Say with me. According to what? According to the disposition of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. 26. 26. Even the mystery which I left now, which had been hid from ages. And from generations. But now is made what? Manifest to who? To the saints. You see, part of our part of our natural expressions as become saints is the apprehension, the mastery of mysteries, or the mastery. Mm. There are so many mysteries that are revealed to us in Scripture. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed. He talked in Ephesians chapter 5, that men should love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. He now says that he might purify her or sanctify her by the washing of water, which is by the word. He goes on to say that this indeed is what? A great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. 
part of our outlook as we commit sins is the apprehension of mysteries. And there are different layers to these things. There are different dimensions. The secret things belong unto the Lord. And, and, and I need to understand that if there are things that are hidden in God, you cannot beat it out of God. You cannot bully it out of Him. I say, so you need to tell me, you need to tell me, you need to tell me. God chooses what He wants to reveal. But when He reveals it, He reveals it to them that are within. Unto you it is given. Now, the prayer I want us to pray this evening is a simple one. I, I can't go further because I need us to pray. It's a simple one. Friends, if there are matters concerning your life that you have not seemed to understand yet, yet, because it can be the case, listen to me, in Mark chapter 4 where we read, it was the case that Jesus had communicated the thing that was given to them to know, which was the mystery of the kingdom, and they did not know it. Let's go back to Mark chapter 4. Give me from verse 10. From verse 10. Act 4 from verse 10. And when he was what? When he was what? They that were about him to be 12. What did they do? They asked him of the parable. They asked him. This is how to gain access to the mystery. It is to ask. This is how to, to gain access to it. When he was alone. They that were about him with the twelve, they asked him of the parable. And even though it is the case that it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom, it can also be the reality that you have no apprehension of them because you do not ask. Are you with me? I hope you know, listen to me, I hope you know that even if you want to ask from now till December 31, this year, if God does not want to give you something, your asking will not provoke him to give it to you. Like I was, I, I, like I used to say, if you find out one day that, ah, Kai, this Pastor Ra's wife is very fine, I want that for myself. If you ask God from now, you say, I'm going to do 22 hours every day of prayer, and the focus of the prayer is, God give me Pastor Ra's wife. It's not available to you. So something that will be given to you by God on account of your asking will be something that is already available to you. And I'm saying that I'm saying to you, Jesus says to us that unto you it is given. To do what? To do what? To know the mystery. To know the mystery of the kingdom. To know the mystery of the kingdom. To know the mystery. Paul says that this mystery has been hid before the world began. If your life looks to you like a parable, your life is still looking to you like a parable, you found out that there are these crescendos, these ups and downs that are happening in your life that you seem not to be able to lay a handle on. And every time something new or something fresh, I see one of my best chapters in the Bible is Job 38. From Job, 30, from Job chapter 2 thereabout to Job chapter 37, Job was speaking, Elihu was speaking, all his friends were speaking, and every, every one of them seemed to have an opinion. By 38, the great one spoke. And the first thing that he said was, who is this? That darkness counsel by words that are stripped of knowledge and to show to him that your words are stripped of knowledge God began to ask questions you know you are asking me a question and say that you are doing this to me you have done this you have cheated me you have I have been I have made a covenant with my eye that's what Job said I have made a covenant with my eye I will never look upon a damsel to lust with her how is it that I've been so faithful all this while and then this is how you repay me in my old age ah then the friends of Job started saying things that Job, it's as if you are, you know, when Elihu spoke, Elihu said, I said to myself, 
let age speak first. But when age spoke, I realized that wisdom is not in age. For there is a spirit in man, and it is the inspiration of the Lord that gives him understanding. Are, are you with me? Now, it does not mean that you should not respect elders. It simply means that if he doesn't got it, he doesn't got it. If, if, the, if the Lord has not given wisdom to him, age cannot give it to him. What God has not given you, age will not give you. Are, are you with me? Mm. When Solomon asked God for wisdom, Solomon was not an old man. And Solomon had, the Bible said, his wisdom was more than the wisdom. Ah, you know. So the point is, it is God that gives wisdom. When they had finished speaking, God now came and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by words that are devoid of understanding? <laughs> verse 3. Give me verse 3. Verse 3. Get up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. So God now said, Okay, you have been talking to me. Let me talk to you. Answer me man to man. Verse 4. Where was thy when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare thou, if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who had laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who had stretched the line upon it? All of us are hearing about these realities for the first time, including Job. Would you have known that God used a line to draw the earth? So God said, who measured the earth? Tell me. You know how? You know how you will buy a land and you will send a surveyor to go and survey? Eh? God said, I surveyed the earth. I surveyed it. Do you know the surveyor that surveyed it? Then what is his name? I am saying that, you see this thing called mystery? If you want to search it, there is no end to it. But there are certain mysteries that are supposed to be the compass by which your life will begin to make sense. You will understand your life in the light of the revelation of these things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? There are some of us that in the spirit we are builders. You cannot know this thing in the Bible school. You, you can't know it. And if God designed for you to be a builder, eh? And you went and joined tailors. You went and joined tailors. And they were training you like a tailor. You see, that's that curriculum. They couldn't have given you it in the Bible school. But it becomes an aberration when it is given to you to know mysteries and you have no access to them because you have not asked. When he was alone, the Bible says, they that were about him with the twelve, they came to him and said, Sir, we know we have been leading prayer in the public. The people that come to service, they look at us and say, ah, see men of God, see men of God. But in reality, when you speak, we are as confused as the people are. Can you tell us what these parables mean? How is it that our life is going? How is it that every three, three months, I see these things happening in my life? How is it the case that every time I do this, this is what I see? How is it the case that for the past 15 years, these have been recurrent, recurrent situations in my life? Show me these parables. What do these parables mean? How is it that you visit me in the night? How is it that you speak to me the way you speak to me? When he was alone. So it means that these kind of things they will be revealed to you in the place of private inquiry. You will have to set aside time where you will go to him and say, Sir, the mysteries that run my life, can you, because it is given to you, to you. Them that are without, if they decide to ask, nothing will, will, will be given to them because it is not given to them to know. And that is why, you, you see, there are people outside that have a, encounters that they cannot place within a framework. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? They have dreams that it is after they got born again that they began to understand the dreams that they were seeing while they were in the world. Because it is not... You remember that people in the world, as far back as the book of Genesis, people like Pharaoh, people like Nebuchadnezzar, were getting dreams from God. Eh? That it needed the hand of an interpreter to tell them that these were the communications of the divine. So, it can be communicated to them in parables, but you see, their life will always be dependent on an interpreter. 
to bring perspective to that which is the current revelation position of the spirit of god but for you it is available if only you can ask and that is what i want you to do tonight that sir they that are were about him including the 12 they came to him and said sir what do these parables mean then jesus said to them it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom it is given to the church to know the mysteries of the kingdom it is given to the saints it is given to them that obey the faith to know it means that your life should never be devoid of the meanings of the revelations of the mystery to which your destiny in god is tied it's tied everything that is pertaining to your life everything that is pertaining to your godliness everything that is pertaining to your productivity on the earth it is encaptured it is it is captured in a mystery and until that mystery is revealed to you on the platform of inquiry of asking you will always be walking in the dark so can you ask him show me things i've never seen before show me things i've never seen before show me things that i've never seen before Ayla, I go benamasa, anto sebra, anke pombre sedio, eleman toke vete ledes, roke kedo, reke sembo kababo, jai kete pete, akunti risadai. I go be vente sebi, I go mi kado, 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 sabre kete pakatwa. Ako bebe dem preske bebe, zabo teke bebe, zabo teke peda bakado, zabo kete sepente, akumbre se ai, ai ko, ai ko. Eh? If your life will make sense in keeping with the plan and purpose of God for it, then everything that is hidden that will make your life make sense needs to be revealed unto you. Can you ask him? Can you ask him? Can you ask him? Elanas. Hele mama mo. Ebi asumi baba daba. Ane baba daba rakadoa. Woo. Ai kete vele. Sambro kete vele. Shade bebe de bebe de pono. Zuke dia aiku. Abrite se petolai, vreto se beveke, je pente ke ponte ahi. Ele na ve le gede. Cobefila <laughs> Sopre de ve capona, cobre, 
compressed in Zede Bracabo, the Lord of Fools. Where is them? Where is them? The Lord of Fools. Where is them? Where is them? Ayla, Fabona Macalos, Predeve Cabonante Babano, Scabo Villa, Akailes, Fintaba. Pray for yourself, pray for yourself, pray for yourself. Ask him, what do these things mean? 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 Hello, Mama, Mama. Aha! <laughs> Elle <laughs> Jesus. 
Lele Kabama. Alléluia. Hey Jesus. Presse vena bras kabonai. Come on, you have three more minutes to press into God. Let the things that have been hidden to you, let them be brought to light. The Bible says that he binded the floods from overflowing. He binded the floods from overflowing. He binded the floods from overflowing. And those things that are hidden, he brings to light. Senema fera sapore kete rose fe de pressa papo chaka dai kapona va sako prete ke dok de 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 zape le vento se ve kapote se prete kapete kapones zape te se preke tote akombre se vele akombre se vele brasaile a combre se vele brasai le pato aiko je de de pente ke pento je prete sente ka palante je prele je prele je prele samba aiko ke de te feta oh e me mama me je de ma je de ma Ele mame se mene aile gadama Ele pro se bene mi ine mama Ele gine se me venie po denana Ila da de mo se be Amen 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 Amen
I see the dungeons are empty. The, the, the prisons are empty. Addictions are failing. Wickedness is failing. The, the, the dungeons are empty. In La Cabona, the valleys are empty. Woo! Addictions are dying. Ella fa copera se pena. Amen. 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 It is only God that can close a door and no man can open it. It doesn't matter what the bad people have done, body, it's been all, of, all, of, all sorts of things. Maybe your life is even a parable and God has been trying to reach out to you through various experiences in parables. Now is that time to lift up your voice to him and say to him, tell me, what do these things mean? Because that's our, that's the permission that we grant him to communicate to us the mystery of the kingdom. And it is God that gives mystery. It's God. Because until it is unlocked, until it is unsealed, no man can unseal it. Everything that God locks, it takes God to open it. That's how the realm of the spirit works. If God does something, it will take God to undo it. If man does something, it will take man to undo it. And it is the plan of God that all of us that are within, we fellowship with the mystery. We have access to the thing that he makes available to us through his blood. So even in cases of your life where it seems as if it is a mystery, you are uncertain about how things work. You need to go to him and say, show me things that I do not know. Now this evening we will take part in the body and the blood of the Lord symbolically. 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 And as we do that, Paul talks about not taking with levity the body of the Lord, the table of the Lord. This itself is a mystery, how that we are fellowshipping with him. And as we so do, he will shower his mercies upon us. Seals that have been sealed and locked upon your life, he will shine his light on your path. That you may know what way to walk. You know, there are certain mistakes that a man can make in his life and it will mar his life forever. There are certain places a man can go that people of his kind should never go. And if your life, if the mystery of your life is not made known to you, you will make avoidable mistakes, unpardonable mistakes. But unto you that are within, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. You are supposed to be a library of revealed mysteries. How do you do this? How do you break out? How do you break out? How do you come out of this thing? Like it was said of Zerah, after Pharez had come out and they put a, a, a cord around his hand, 
And then Zerah came. And the midwife asked, How? How did you break for it? It shall be the case for you that you shall break for it. You shall break for it. Aya. You shall break for it. So while we take part in the table of the Lord, I want a prayer to be on your heart. And that prayer will be the prayer that the disciples of Jesus asked to him. What do these parables mean? What do these things mean? And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. Matthew 7 says, He that asks get. What happens to him? He shall receive. There are mysteries about surrounding my life that I need answers for. Because so long as you are a man, the complications, the appendages, you come from a long line. Matthew recorded 42 generations of Jesus. 42. Your own is plenty. And all of these people are 42 times in your family. Your people, you don't even know the Lord. And many of them have mixed you up and make you mingle. Sometimes you look at the members of your family, you cannot tell how everybody is going in a particular direction. How did I break out? Can you show me the mystery? Make known unto me. Then your life will make sense. There are times I've gone to God to ask those questions, particularly about my life, and then he began to give me things to do. Say, do this, do this. And as I did it, it became clear to me that this is the path to walk, to stay out of this trouble. To stay out of this situation, this is the path to walk. And I'm still pressing on. I'm giving to you a way. I show you a way tonight. It is to ask, what do these parables mean? And so we will partake of the body and the, and the wine this morning, this evening. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Aila. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had sopped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. And so this evening we give thanks for the bread. We give thanks for the provision for the bread and for this table of the Lord where we all by reason of the largesse of his grace are privileged to be a part of we thank you we thank you because you have counted us worthy to be partakers of the divine nature and we bless you for the bread we bless you for the wine we thank you that you have counted us worthy to eat with you even in a symbol. We ask that this will be an excuse that you would have to make known unto us the mystery of the kingdom as touching our contribution and our citizenship therein in the name of Jesus. If there be any amongst us that is sick as they partake of this, let them receive their healing. If there be any that is weak as they partake of this, let them be made strong. If there be any of us that is at the verge of death, as we partake of this, we receive life in the name of Jesus. And tonight the door is open. Access to mystery. Thank you for the bread. We thank you for the wine. In Jesus' precious name we pray. 
So they will be led to come take or partake of this table. And I pray that as you do it, you do it with prayer. Let the doors of the mysteries be opened unto you. So let the brethren come.